Hello and welcome to lecture 54 of the course Computational Complexity. This is also the beginning of week 11. In this week, we will see uh, the topic of communication complexity. Okay, as I have highlighted, it is um, the key aspect here is communication. So far, we have seen models of computation where uh, the uh, like complexity classes are, are based on the on a certain uh, resource. How much of a certain resource is used? It could be time, it could be space, it could be size of a certain circuit, it could be randomness in the case of a randomized algorithm, and so on. Right? In this model, the 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 resource that is under consideration is communication. How much communication happens? So, what do I mean by communication? Well, uh, in this uh, in the in the, the setting of communication complexity. There is another fundamental difference uh, from what we have seen so far. So, in the in the models we have seen so far, uh, the, all the input is provided to the Turing machine or the circuit, right? As, as the case may be, and and it's up to the Turing machine or the circuit to decide uh, to output accept reject or to uh, compute a certain function. However, in this model, we assume there are two parties or uh, or more two or more parties actually. Who are sitting in uh, uh, different places, or it could be geographically separate, and they have to compute, if, and they have both have their own inputs. So the the, the in the two party setting, these two parties are called Alice and Bob usually. And Alice has a certain input x, Bob has a certain input y, and together they have to compute a joint function of x and y. So it could be it could be the product of x and y. It could be the sum. It could be the difference, or it could be certain other things also, right? So the function could be anything that depends on. Uh, it, it could also be just output Alice's uh, last bit, right? It's also technically a function of x and y, right? And the one way in which this differs from whatever we have seen so far uh, is that. Is that um, uh, th there is no bound on the computation power? So both Alice and Bob are considered all powerful. They can do any computation that is decidable or that is doable, or or even perhaps undecidable things. Right? The the problem is uh, that we are charging them on the communication. So since the function that they have to compute is a joint function. Um, to, to actually execute the computation, they will have to send some, some bits across. So perhaps Alice sends some to Bob, perhaps Bob sends some, some back to Alice, perhaps there is a back and forth, right? And what we are interested in is the total amount of communication that has happened. So this is the model of communication complexity, right? So, so as, as you can check the, uh, see the red part here. So Alice has the input X. From a, from a domain capital X and Bob has an input Y from the domain capital Y. Okay? And they have to compute a joint function F, which is Fx uh, is a joint function of X uh, and Y. And the joint function belongs to the set capital Z. Okay? And in most of the, I think in, at least in uh, this, uh, we will, um, in, in this set of lectures, we will restrict Z to be uh, binary or Boolean. Okay, z will be just 0, 1 function. So the function that they will have to compute will be a 0, 1 function, at least for our purposes in the in the in the in the few set of lectures that uh, we will have in our course, right? So how can Alice and Bob uh, com uh, jointly compute the function? So well, they could have some kind of an arrangement. So depending on, so they, they know what function they have to compute. They just don't know the inputs. So or rather, Alice knows Alice's input, but she does not know Bob's input. Bob knows Bob's input, but she, she does not know Alice's input. So uh, well, one one way is um, so so they could do some communication. So one simple way is Alice sends everything to Bob. Alice sends her entire input to Bob, and then Bob can compute the uh, the function, and then Bob sends the function, the, the computed function value back to Alice. This is one way, right? So, but then sometimes there are better ways of doing this, right? This, this whatever I just said is available regardless of whatever function it is. But there, there may be better ways for certain functions. So, or, uh, so in general, what could happen is Alice sends something to Bob, right? 
let's say a1 is what she sends and then bob upon seeing a1 okay he gets some information so a1 could be one bit two bits whatever depending on the protocol that they have agreed upon so depending on what a1 is bob sends back b1 so b1 could depend on a1 it need not depend on a1 so b1 is a function of both what bob has and also uh, what alice has sent right and then maybe alice sends something back back a2 a2 will be a function of what she has combined with what uh, function bob sent right so what input bob sent so like this back and forth could go on for many rounds right but uh, what we care about is not how many rounds of back and forth happened rather how many total bits have been communicated right so it doesn't matter if, if, if they come communicated 10 bits over 10 rounds or 10 bits over one round right what matters is how much of communication has happened right so again the same thing i have written down in pros each communication ai depends on uh, so ai is the uh, in, uh, input sent by Alice to Bob. It depends on X and all the prior communication she has received. Similarly, BJ depends on Y and all the prior communication Bob has received. At the end, right, just by looking what has been transmitted, what Alice sent, what Bob sent, what Alice sent back and etc. Now, we should be, one should be able to compute the function just by looking at the message transcript. So, message transcript is the set of all the messages that has that have been communicated right of course if, if you, you you must know the protocol if without the protocol you, you cannot make sense of the transcript so the message transcript is the entire set of messages that have been sent back and forth by looking at the transcript one should be able to determine what the function is right so obviously alice and bob both of them know the entire transcript because alice either all the AIs were sent by Alice, so Alice knows AIs. All the BJs were received by Alice, so all, Alice also knows BJs. Right? Similarly, Bob also. Right? So at the end, the function value should be clear from the transcript, meaning there should not be any confusion on the function value. It should be uh, one should be able to determine the function value from the transcript. This is the requirement. Right? Okay. So, what is the deterministic communication complexity? Okay, so in this um, in this few lectures that we will see, uh, we will only see deterministic communication complexity. Um, we'll briefly describe something called randomized communication complexity later, but we will see mainly deterministic communication complexity. So, there is a corresponding randomized notion as well. It is denoted by the uh, symbol DF, okay, capital D of F. It is the so basically given a certain protocol right protocol is uh, a, a certain um, protocol an agreement between alice and bob to communicate in a certain way to compute the function right? to jointly compute the function so let's say pi is a protocol okay pi so given a certain protocol so we want to minimize over all the possible protocols right so there could be protocol that does a lot of communication, but we don't want that. We want the protocol that does the smallest communication. So what do I mean by communication does be done by a protocol? So what? So consider all the possibilities. What input Alice can have? What input Bob can have? So what is the worst case over all all pairs of inputs that they have? So it is it is possible that. In some inputs, some x, some pairs x, y, uh, without much communication, they are able to compute the function. Right? So, what we are interested in is what is the pair x, y that causes them to communicate the most, and that is what we will consider. So, max of all max over all the pairs x, y, right? The number of bits communicated uh, by the protocol pi to compute the function. Okay, and we want to choose pi such that pi minimizes the maximum communication for all pairs x y okay so this may seem uh, confusing if this seems confusing think of any algorithm how do we measure algorithms running time uh, we let's say we want to say sorting can be completed in order n log n time or the, the complexity of sorting is n log n what do i mean by that what do i mean by that is that uh, you consider so consider any algorithm for sorting and we want to consider so 
we will say the complexity of sorting is, is n log n because that is the fastest or most efficient algorithm that can come that can uh, uh, perform the sorting right so so that is like the minimum over all pi right? the minimum over all procedures that uh, uh, do sorting right and then within that once what do we want for a certain algorithm we want to maxim we want to consider the worst case input right so that's what is happening uh, is happening here as well so certain uh, given once the protocol pi is fixed we want to consider the worst case input pair xy so it is exactly in parallel to what we know about um, computational problems and algorithms how we say that a certain problem can be done in a certain time okay okay so this may seem so things will become clearer with some examples that we will see very soon okay and uh, so one may wonder why is this why are we studying this right so the other models that we have seen so far had some uh, uh, motivation like they, they were real models of computation or they looked like what we think are real models but what is this like why would like why would Alice and Bob be so powerful but then they, pay, they have to pay so much for computation uh, communication right? that, that's the model that we don't charge anything for their local computation but we charge for the only for the number of bits that are being sent so there are situations like uh, distributed computing where um, the major uh, the, the major choke point becomes the communication rather than the local computation right and and interestingly even uh, when without appealing to distributed computing etc there are uh, other areas of complexity other sub areas of complexity where communication complexity finds uh, applications so for instance uh, streaming so streaming is uh, is the streaming algorithm is a class of algorithms where the in where you have such a large amount of input that you cannot possibly store it in your memory right so you can make passes through the input but cannot store the entire input right so in these passes you have to um, compute certain function of the input so you cannot store the input in the memory so, uh, sur uh, so this may this may seem surprising but uh, you can use uh, lower bounds from from communication complexity to arrive at lower bounds for streaming so if you want you can say things like because function f takes this much uh, communication complexity or requires at least this many bits of communication that means that a certain function let's say g uh, to compute in the streaming setting uh, uh, requires at least uh, order this much space or this many passes right can be. so if once you learn about it it will be it will be fairly natural but the idea is that in the streaming you have a limited memory so you could think of as communicating between the current uh, the current memory and the future memories right so you could think of the, or rather you could think of the memory being used as a vehicle to communicate between the present and the future or present and the past right so that 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 is the uh, that is a very 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 high level picture of why communication complexity is applicable in streaming uh, another surprising application is uh, we saw the model of computation called circuits so we will actually see one circuit lower bound using communication complexity so it will be for a very specific setting uh, and for a certain class monotone functions but still it is interesting to see how what we have already seen such as uh, circuits uh, has a lower bound coming from something communication complexity so you, one may think that communication has nothing to do with circuits but then uh, there is a there is a way to use this to get an application uh, at in circuits right so in fact this part we will actually see in the upcoming lectures so let us see some examples right so one simple function is the equality function so alice has x bob has y and they have to compute the equality function and what is the equality function equality function is simply one if and only if alice's input and bob's input are the same so only if and only if x equal to y the, in, the output is one right and one um, right and otherwise it is zero so if x is not equal to y it's zero so one very simple protocol is for alice to send x her entire input to bob okay so this is the entire input 
Alice's input, entire input she is sending to Bob. And now that Bob has x and he already had y, he can just check whether x and y are equal. Right? And once that happens, she, uh, Bob sends uh, 0 or 1 back. He sends 0 if they are not equal, he sends 1 if they are equal. Right? And what is the complexity of this, um, um, this protocol? So, this is a specific protocol. right? So, Alice sends her entire input, Bob sends the function. So, the entire input, so again, the, the, let me just be a bit more, uh, give a bit more details. So, both Alice's input and Bob's input are considered to be n bit binary vectors, okay, and they have to compute the 0, 1 function. So, Alice sends her entire n bits, right, so that is n bits of communication. Bob sends 1 bit back, so that is n plus 1 bits of communication. And regardless of whatever pair x, y in happens in this case, they, they, they use n plus 1 bits of communication, right. So, n plus 1 is the number of bits of communication for this protocol. But um, there could be better, there could be other protocols that do even better, right. So, so what we know is that the deterministic communication complexity of uh, equality, so denoted by eq subscript n, equality of n bit numbers is at most n plus 1. So, this protocol gives you a complexity of n plus 1, but presume maybe there are better protocols, right. So, we know that deterministic communication complexity of equality is at most n plus 1, right. And uh, some of you who are paying close attention may already be uh, thinking that this protocol had nothing to do with equality, right. We did not use any special properties of the function equality. Alice sends her entire input, Bob computes the function, Bob computes the function and sends it back, right. So, with any, for any uh, function whose output is 0, 1, we can implement this protocol, right. So, this means any Boolean function that they, when they jointly compute, Alice can send her entire input and Bob can send one bit output, right. So, this is, this is true for any f, right. In fact, maybe I will just write it over here. In fact, df is at most n plus 1 for any function, uh, let us say 0 1, 0 1 to 0 1, right. So, the, the, we did not use any specific properties of equality, ok. So, now uh, let us see another function called parity. So, parity of x, y is the total number of bits. Um, so, it is x, i, y, i parity of that and then parity of the entire thing. So, in other words, it is simply, uh, this is simply 1 if and only if the total number of bits in x and y, the total number of 1s in x and y is odd. So, maybe I will just write here 1 if and only if uh, there is a an odd number of 1s in x and y combined. There is an odd number of 1s in x and y combined. This is the parity. Right. So, of course, we could do whatever we did with equality. We could just send, have Alice send everything to Bob and then Bob could send it back. So, this, this would take n plus 1 bits. But however, in this case, uh, there is a better uh, algorithm, better protocol. So, notice that parity of x, y is actually, you can also write it like this. You could compute the individual parity of x and compute the individual parity of y right and then take parity of these two things right so it is because the parity is distribute right so you could take the individual parity of x and individual parity of y and you could you could you could take the parity of both of them together so one thing that you can do is uh, alice can send the parity of her entire input and Bob can send the parity of his entire input, 
And now both of them can compute the function and, and so can anybody who is just looking at the transcript, right? Alice just needs the parity of Bob's input and Bob just needs the parity of Alice's input. And what is the complexity here, the communication complexity here? It is simply 2 because Alice just sends one bit and Bob just sends one bit back. So we have shown a protocol where the, the maximum communication required is 2, 2 bits. And so this is an upper bound, right? Just coming back to equality, in fact, uh, we will later see that the communication complexity of equality is actually equal to n plus 1, even though here we saw an, showed an upper bound. Uh, another function, say average, right? So let's say uh, Alice gets a set S of 1, 2, 3 up to n, a subset of 1, 2, 3 up to n, T gets a set, uh, Bob gets a set T, which is a subset of 1, 2, 3 up to n. So, um, so uh, and they have to compute the average of the multi set between them. So, just let me give an example. Let us say Alice gets the set S, which is 1, 2, 5, and Bob gets the set T, which is 1, 2, 4, 6. Then the S union T, the multi set union, is actually if an element is common to both, then it will be counted twice. So, it will be the S. The multi set will be the multi set union will be will be actually uh, 1, 2, 5, 1, 2, 4, 6. So we retain the multiple copies. So 1, 2, 1 and 2 appear two times. So we retain the multiple copies and then the average of this set. So it is simply 1 plus 2 plus 5 plus 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 6, 4 plus 6. So 1 plus 2 plus 5 is 8, 1 plus 2 plus 4 is 7, 15 uh, plus 6 is 21, divided by 7 is 3. So the average of the multi set S union T is 3. So how can Alice and Bob uh, come up with a protocol? So this is something I am just, I am not going to explain how, but I would like you to think about it. And one more point that I want to mention now. So, till now we talked about Alice and Bob getting a binary string, but here we are talking about Alice and Bob getting sets or subsets. But uh, it is essentially the same thing. So, for instance, uh, if Alice's set is uh, just, uh, let, let's say, the set of all odd numbers, let's say S is 1, 3, 5, and so on. This corresponds to the binary vector 1, 0, 1, 0, etc. Basically, the first bit indicates whether 1 is that 1 is there, second bit being 0 indicates 2 is not there, third bit being 1 indicates that 3 is there, fourth bit being 0 indicates 4 is not there, and so on. Right? And another example is let's say this is just a set 1, 2, 2, two element set. This corresponds to the binary string 1 0 0 0 0 1 1 0 0 0 0 0. Right. So, the first two bits are ones and followed by a bunch of zeros. So, you can see how there is a correspondence between uh, a subset of 1 2 3 up to n and an n bit vector. Right. The all ones vector will correspond to the, the set 1 2 3 up to n, all zeros vector will correspond to the empty set. Okay. So again, here also the input is um, a, a 0, 1 vector of length n, but the output is actually a number. Okay, so I would like you to think of how to come up with a protocol for this. Okay. Um, yeah, so, so each one of them can compute their average and send, but that may not work out. How will they compute, compute how will they communicate the average? All these things need to be thought about. So just, just try to work it out and try to compute exactly how much of communication is required. Okay. Um, another problem is uh, of median. Okay. So again, Alice and Bob have sets S and T um, denoted the way I said above. Like here is there's another example. Uh, set 1, 3, 4 is 1, 0, 1, 1, 0. Let's say over 5 bits. And um, how do they compute the median? How can they compute the median of the 
uh, of the multi set union again multi set union like we said before okay so um, one protocol is based on binary search okay i'll just explain the protocol so here alice and bob will always retain or always maintain a, a an interval within which uh, the median should lie an interval ij okay so to begin with they will say that the median will lie anywhere between uh, 1 to n right because those are the elements under consideration and then what alice does is alice sends the number of elements above the midpoint and number of elements below the midpoint so alice sends both because uh, it, there is no requirement that alice has a contiguous set or some anything right so alice sends the number of elements above the midpoint and bob sends the number of elements uh, sorry alice sends the number of elements above as well as below the midpoint in her own set right and now bob knows the midpoint bob also can see how many elements are above the midpoint and below the midpoint in his own set and depending on that he can see where are the larger number of elements right so what i'm saying is uh, that if this is a range let's say i and this range j and this is the midpoint i plus j by 2 alice can send how many elements are there in her set in this range and bob can also do this and depending on where um, and and sorry alice let me repeat alice sends how many elements are there between the range i and sorry let me just say it again alice sends uh, how many elements are there in the range above i plus j by 2 okay not in this range alone Right, above i plus j by 2 and below i plus j by 2 and obviously bob also knows how many elements that he has in his range he doesn't need to send it but he knows so now after this he knows the total number of elements and he also knows how many uh, so which side it is above i plus j by 2 or if it is below i plus j by 2 or if the median is equal to i plus j by 2 so depending on that he will inform alice that the median is above or below right so now uh, maybe let's say he says it is above right now alice can uh, refine the range let's say he says it's above right so now now you set i to be this and um, i to be the new i to be i plus j by 2 and then repeat so every time the the range of uh, where the median is is being narrowed and how many times do we will we have to narrow uh, because every time we are at least making the range half of the original size so we can we need to do it at most log n number of times because the, initially the range is of width n and at each time we are sending i plus j by 2 sorry uh, we are sending the count the count of numbers will be some uh, uh, the number of elements that we know there are at most n elements so the count will be at most of a number of size order log n so order log n many 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 bits and order log n uh, log exactly log n many rounds so it is order log n multiplied by log n the complexity is order log n squared or order log square n. okay so this is another example of a protocol okay so now uh, let me explain uh, another important uh, notion in the in the say in the case of communication complexity okay it is called a protocol tree okay so this is just another way of representing the same protocol that we already explained right so the nodes are the states it's a binary tree where the nodes are the states and the leaf nodes are all marked 0 1 okay so assuming that the function is a 0 1 function okay so let's say alice is the one to speak so whenever alice is the one to speak 
then the function will be a something and whenever Bob is the one to speak the function will be b something. So suppose Alice says a u x which is some function on her own input and she may compute the function and uh, transmit it to Bob let us say the function is 0 or the function is 1. Bob um, so now what I am saying is that if the function is 0 then Bob may respond and if the function is 1 perhaps so it is not always necessary that the protocol has Alice saying something followed by Bob saying something. Even in the same protocol that I have drawn here when Alice says 0 Bob responds and when Alice says 1 Alice continues to transmit. So, so it, it need not be um, every branch need not have the same kind of uh, 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 same kind of communication interchange right. So, when Alice goes to the uh, Alice says 0 initially Bob speaks and when Alice says 1 then it means that Bob knows to wait that and allow Alice to speak Alice to speak right. So, you can and 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 the and at the bottom you have these leaves which are marked um, terminals mark mark 0 or 1 and when you have another function here like like a q here which means there is another uh, another uh, subtree beneath a q right again some a q will be 0 something will happen a q 1 something else will happen and so on right. So, the leaves mean that uh, let us say when I have a when I reach a let us say a u is 0 b v is 0 and then you reach reach this leftmost leaf what it means is that at this stage the function is uh, determined and the function is 0. So, the Alice and Bob can stop communicating because at this stage it is there is only one way to or there is this me uh, if they have both sent 0 initially this means the function has to be 0 and both of them know that and then they can stop communicating right? this is what it means. And um, it is easy to see that the total co bits communicated it is actually the height of the tree right. So, the, the what is the uh, longest route to leaf path for whichever leaf it is that is the uh, height of the tree and that is also the, the depth of the protocol maybe not really depth of the, uh, the complexity of the protocol right. So, the complexity of the protocol is not is denoted d f by this is the complexity of the protocol not of the function the complexity of the function will, will be d of f is actually minimum over all protocols d f by and d f pi is the complexity of the uh, protocol. So, which is the maximum. So, the, the, the height of the tree means it is the maximum length of the path. So, here the in this picture the tree is of length at least 1, 2, 3, 4. We do not know how deep this tree goes, but even though there is a root leaf path of length 2 that is not the maximum. So, here we know that d f pi is at least 4. Okay. So, this is a way to represent the protocol by a binary tree. So, let me just uh, let us just see one protocol one um, or one specific function and the protocol tree to understand. So, let us consider the function equality function over two bits. So, let us say x1 x2 is the L input of Alice and y1 y2 is the input of Bob. So, let us say Alice sends the first bit that she has x1 itself right and there are two possibilities it's 0 or 1 and Bob sends his input the first bit of his input y1 0 1. So, now uh, let me just erase this green circle. Okay. So, now consider what would have happened let us say Alice's first bit is 0 and Bob's first bit is 1 means that they already can conclude that their functions are that their inputs are not the same. So, there are four possibilities here Alice could be uh, having 0 0 and Bob could be having uh, 0 1 I am sorry maybe I will just right Alice could be having any of these two inputs 0 0 0 1 right because how do you reach this 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 no here that there is circle with the green circle 
x1 has to be 0 and y1 has to be 1. So it could be any of these four possible combinations. x could be 0, 0 or 0, 1 and y could be 1, 0 or 1, 1. Right? So in all these combinations, we know that x and y are not equal because the first bit, bit itself is not equal. And similarly, in this no, in this no, right? Also, there are four possibilities. X is, uh, so here x1 is 1 and y1 is 0. So x1 is 1, 0 or 1, 1 and y1 is, y is 1, 0, 0 or 0, 1. Even then it's not equal. But suppose x1 and y1 were equal, right? So suppose x1 and y1 were both 0. Then we have a similar interchange or similar exchange of x2 and y2, right? Suppose we have a similar exchange for x2 and y2. Um, so let us see what happens. So suppose x2 and y2 are the same, x2 and y2 are both 0. What does it mean? This means that x is 0, 0 and y is 0, 0. Suppose x2 and y2 are both 1. In this case, we know that x is 1, 1 and y is 1, 1. And there are two other cases where x2 is 0, y2 is 1. So which is um, 0, 0 and 0, 1. Right. Or another case when x2 is 1, y2 is 0. So it is uh, 0, 1. 0, 0. So in this case, so you say the answer is uh, yes and no as per the input combination. So when they are equal, we say yes. When they are not equal, we say no. And similarly, we have a subtree uh, marked in the red as a red triangle in the right side as well. So this is the protocol tree for Alice and Bob when they compute equality or this is one protocol tree for a certain protocol. Okay. So this is the protocol tree. So you can see that uh, in some cases it is possible for one node of the protocol tree, one leaf of the protocol tree to capture multiple input combinations. So the circled leaf here at the height uh, at the depth 2 is capturing four combinations 0 0 uh, x is 0 0 0 1 and y is 1 0 1 1. And this one also the second node is also capturing four combinations. But the, the, the leaves at the depth uh, 4 are only capturing one one combination each. Right? So sometimes the leaves capture more, sometimes the leaves do not capture more. And um, so, so can we say something about uh, what to uh, like what are the inputs that reach each node of the protocol tree and what can we infer about the uh, complexity of the protocol from that right okay so that uh, and and uh, uh, some some inferences used from that we will see in the next lecture okay so what uh, we have seen so far uh, or maybe i'll just uh, say one more thing uh, is that what we are mostly interested in is bounds on the complexity right so we saw here we saw equality and this particular equality protocol uh, the tree has depth 4 e even the, the this 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 red part is that is shaded is not not it filled but that will be symmetric to the one in the right in the left so this tree has depth 4 so this is a protocol for equality that uses 4 bits right so is this the best best protocol no because we already saw that there is a protocol where Alice sends her entire input to Bob and Bob just computes the function. So that is just 3 bits, n plus 1 bits. But this is just, just to illustrate what can be done with a protocol or how to represent using a protocol tree. And we will be seeing how to bound the communication complexity of a certain function using various techniques. Right. So, uh, but perhaps I should, uh, I should, uh, do it in the next lecture. So just to summarize what we have seen, we have seen the communication complexity model, uh, we have seen some examples and we have seen what is a protocol tree, um, how it can be used to represent a certain protocol for it to compute a certain function with the example of equality. So next lecture we will see some bounds arising out of this. Okay, thank you.